welcome to the channel, I'm Volcano AC and today I will be reviewing the brand new Shure SM7 DB microphone. This is an active microphone with cardioid polar pattern. The predecessor SM7 was first released in 1973, upgraded to SM7A in 1999, then upgraded to SM7B in 2001, and this year 2023 released as the SM7DB. The DB comes from its new future an integrated pre-amplifier to eliminate the need of using a separate gain booster. You can have gain of plus 18 dB or plus 28 dB, hence its new dB name. The rest of the mic components remained the same as in the legendary SM7B. For example, it kept the low cut and present boost options. Note that the new mic also has the option to turn off the preamp in case you will still want to use a different preamp or booster. Last week I unboxed this microphone, link to that video in the description below. And in this episode I will review the gain potential of the integrated preamp on a relatively inexpensive audio interface, the Presonus Studio 24C. Actually, the mic is more expensive than this audio interface. The Presonus interface has XMAX preamps, which are fine but need to be cranked up all the way when I use another Shure Gain Hungry microphone, the Shure SM57. When the interface preamp is cranked all the way up, you can have noise floor issues. In addition, when the preamp is at its max capacity, it is more difficult for me to capture pristine and clear sounds. Thus, I'm really excited to check out how the integrated preamp on the Shure SM7DB helps me not only to eliminate the need to buy a separate booster, but also not to have to crank all the way up the preamp in my audio interface. In this video, I'll first show you the preamp potential of this mic and then I'll compare the sound quality to another cardioid microphone with polar pattern. The Audio Technica 2020, the Shure SM7DB cost $500 plus tax, whereas this Audio Technica microphone cost around $100 plus tax. There should be a $400 sound difference, right? And by the way, right now you are listening to me through the Rode Video Mic Go that goes for about $90. My last note before we get started is that this is not a sponsored video. All right, let's get started. All right, and here we are with the SM7 DB. Volume is at noon, no phantom power, preamp is off, mid booster off, low cut off, everything off. I don't know if you can actually even hear me. So. Let's start cranking up that volume. So we are in input number one, and this is how it sounds. I don't think you can hear me a whole lot. So now let's go ahead and turn on the phantom power. All right, I think at this point in time, you uh, very likely are having more clarity with this Shure SM7DB, but we haven't turned on yet its main feature. But before we do that, let's do a low cut and a presence boost, okay? All 
low cut is on now let's move on add the presence boost all right so now it should be like the original sm7b and now it comes the trick but actually give me just a second i want to crank up my levels in input one of my presonus 24c audio interface okay and now the volume is cranked up like i mentioned in the intro this is the only way really to get some decent sound before i actually uh, turn on the integrated preamp um, let me turn off the uh, phantom power just to see if uh, the signal continues the same or not all right the signal of the phantom power was turned off and i think you can still listen to me okay all right but remember for the integrated preamp to work you need phantom power so i'll turn it back on and now it's time to finally turn on the preamp at plus 18 dbs all right and now i need to talk a little bit softer because i know it's way louder let me reduce my volume in input number one remember i cranked it up before so i want to go backwards now so now we are at three o'clock hopefully that is not uh, too quiet just for this demo but the reason i went to three o'clock is because now it's turn for us to crank up our preamp again And now we have plus 28 dB. Wow, I can hear very, very clearly, especially here on my monitor headphones. I can see my signal. I'm monitoring also uh, the sound waves on my uh, computer monitor. So I know this signal is really good. So now that we are nice and clear, um, with our input number one of our budget interface not being cranked up all the way I can tell you that I really like much more the sound but remember I turned on earlier the low cut and the presence boost so now let's go backwards and turn it off and this is my voice without the boost uh, the presence boost preamp still on and now i'm gonna turn off the low cut i think it's on 80 hertz the cut which actually is excellent so we don't have to do it in post uh, especially for the voice that's actually a really good practice to have it on so now it's off and now let's see how it sounds as i go back now I'm probably about a, a foot away from the mic and I think you can still hear me. I'm coming closer, 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 closer and I'm pretty, pretty close. Um, I can go even further away, maybe a foot and a half and I think with a plus 28 dBs you can still hear me. But actually just here on my pre- um, evaluations of this mic I really like to check out the plus 18 because it gave me really good signal as well I can crank up just a little bit maybe four o'clock somewhere around there um, let me know if you like how it sounds right there um, There we go. Now let's turn on again the mid frequency booster. And this is my voice at plus 18 dBs on the integrated preamp and with the low cut and with the 
presence boost as well so let me know what do you think all right and now i would like to compare this especially now that all the features of this microphone are turned on i want to compare it against our next uh, microphone which is the at audio technica 2020 let's go all right and i'm back now with the preamp in the Shure SM7 dB on, I have it at its max, which is 28 dBs of gain. And as you can see, I have both mics um, connected and one of them, the AT2020, right now I have it at zero so that it's not recording anything. But I'm gonna try to read something. And yes, I have the low cut on on this mic and I also have the presence boost on just to have maximum gain, maximum everything in terms of capability of the mic to see if it's really worth the 400 difference to the regular AT2020 that costs only $99. So um, let me open something up here and I'm gonna read it for you. It doesn't make sense what I wrote, but it has lots of S's, lots of T's, he has one X just, you know, so that uh, we can compare what happens. So let me start uh, by reading this. Uh, I'll adjust to exactly three o'clock. All right. And uh, here I go. Astronauts requested supplies before sunset on Earth. The radio signal indicated that there is a jazz band in the space center. Don't forget to send a drum set, a bass, a trumpet, a microphone, two amplifiers, and a left-handed guitar. The spaceship with supplies leaves at six o'clock. All right, and now the AT2020 in the right input, different track actually on my DAW. Um, let's see if I can have about the same distance. Remember, for those of you that actually are not as familiar with this microphone, I need to talk right there. So that's what I'm not talking over here because it, sound can only enter from this one side, which is different than on the Shure SM7 dB. So that's the reason why I have it face uh, looking to me. All right, so here I go again. We have input number uh, two at three o'clock as well. Uh, this one uh, also requires phantom power, so still on, and let's see how it goes. Astronauts requested supplies before sunset on Earth. The radio signal indicated that there is a jazz band in the space center. Don't forget to send a drum set, a bass, a trumpet, a microphone, two amplifiers, and a left-handed guitar. The spaceship with supplies leaves at six o'clock. All right, so tell me if uh, you notice any particular difference on the AT2020, this mic, or did you like more the SM7 dB? This one can also give me a range from all the way up here. Look at that. I am probably 15 inches or so away. And how about when I speak on the side, maybe it doesn't pick as much. But as I get closer, I think that it truly gives me a really good signal. And I can crank it up too, if uh, we feel that's needed, but I don't think so. I'll separate the mic a little bit away from me so that it's uh, <laughs> not too loud for you. Okay, now I have it at noon. Maybe you won't hear much.
how about four o'clock I think four o'clock it's uh, really really good um, uh, good volume for this mic especially if you want to sing with this mic you can be yelling right now <laughs> and it wouldn't be an issue so all right um, let me uh, show you this test again uh, but maybe I'll start this time with this microphone. I'll read it for you just as a final test. Astronauts requested supplies before sunset on Earth. The radio signal indicated that there is a jazz band in the space center. Don't forget to send a drum set, a bass, a trumpet, a microphone, two amplifiers, and a left-handed guitar. The spaceship with supplies leaves at 6 o'clock. I am now in the Shure SM7DB. Astronauts requested supplies before sunset on Earth. The radio signal indicated that there is a jazz band in the space center. Don't forget to send a drum set, a bass, a trumpet, a microphone, two amplifiers, and a left-handed guitar. The spaceship with supplies leaves at 6 o'clock. All right, let's go to the final conclusions. All right, let me know in the comments below if you heard any difference between the Shure SM7DB and the Audio-Technica 2020. If you did, was it a $400 difference? On my opinion, to have an integrated preamp when using a budget interface is a must. It eliminates the need of a booster. If I will have a high-end preamp with lots of gain, probably I wouldn't need the integrated preamp, nor the extra line booster. However, for my case, the Shure SM7DB mic, it's perfect. Regarding the comparison of the two different mics, I will say that I hear a difference, especially when I say words with the letter S. It softens my S's and makes my speech smoother. I really like that I don't have to go fix that in post, saving me lots of time. In terms of quality, I think both microphones deliver excellent quality, irrespectively of the price. In a blind comparison, I don't think I could tell which mic is which, specifically if the signal passes through a compressor, an EQ, an ESR, etc. So, is it worth the price? On my opinion, absolutely yes. It makes a budget interface sound like a pro. It has the low cut and presence boost options to adjust the sound going instead of having to worry about that in post. Is it worth $400 difference to the other microphone? It depends on what you are doing and what's the goal of your recordings. Also, it depends on what other tools you have at your disposal. If I will have high-end preamps that give certain color to the recording signal, then this specific mic might not be a must. But if it is the center of gravity of my small home studio, then it will be a yes. If you are in the podcast or voiceover business, I will say it's a yes. This mic is the radio-ready sound we all know and love. If you are into streaming, I don't think it will be a must. There are other mics at less uh, price that can deliver great sound as well. Plus, the audience is not necessarily expecting radio-ready sound. In the end, only you can know if it's worth the $400 difference based on your own situation. All right, and that's all for this episode. If you like this video, don't forget to smash the like button. And for more videos like this, don't forget to subscribe. Thank you for stopping by and I'll see you on the next one. Bye-bye.